One of the big things we need to take a look at when determining if this hurricane season will be more active than usual is the amount of wind shear over the Atlantic. When Because usually when there's a stronger amount of wind shear, we see less storms than usual. But when there's a weaker amount of wind shear, we see more storms and hurricanes than usual. And one of the big things that will help us determine whether or not we're going to be um, see less than usual wind shear or more than usual wind shear is taking a look at the Enzo outlook, where typically during a La Nina, we see that the wind Wind shear is typically lighter than usual over the Atlantic, which allows more hurricanes and tropical storms to form. And as you can see, during the summer months of June, July, August, we're going to be in a La Nina pattern, which is the most likely scenario at this time. And in fact, the La Nina pattern is so strong over the equator Pacific, I'm almost inclined to not even call it a La Nina pattern, but more like a La Mama pattern, where it signifies the mother of the La Nina. So during the months of June, July, August, you should expect the La Mama, the La Mama, the La Mama pattern over those three months by how strong the La Nina pattern will be, which unfortunately could lead to a lot more hurricanes and tropical storms than usual over the Atlantic with uh, lighter than, um, than usual wind shear during a La Nina phase. As we clearly see during a La Nina pattern, we see that the cooler than average sea surf temperatures are over the equatorial Pacific, which allows the air to sink a lot more, which creates less of a, a divergence in the upper levels, which means that less wind shear moves over the Atlantic. So we see weak upper level winds during a La Nina. So based on this, based on the fact that this La Nina pattern is expected to be strong, I'm, I could almost expect, combined with the fact that we're going to see warmer than average sea surf temperatures, we're going to see a far more active than usual hurricane season, unfortunately, um, to the point where I'd almost call it hyperactive, or and it has potential to potentially be historic with all these factors combining together. As we clearly see during a La Nina pattern, the, we see many more tropical cyclones over the Atlantic, especially much more landfalls as a result of that, compared to an El Nino pattern where we see a lot less hurricanes form thanks to the stronger than usual wind shear that typically has during El Nino patterns while during a La Nina pattern, there's less wind shear so we're bound to see much more hurricane development. Um, with a lack of wind shear, but we need to look at other factors to also determine um, where exactly the strongest or weakest amount of wind shear will be located because that could give us a good indication of where exactly a lot of these hurricanes could develop this hurricane season. One of the big things that could help us determine the amount of wind shear over the Atlantic is taking a look at the Sahel precipitation or the precipitation right over the Saharan desert or at least the anomalies of the precipitation where during the summer months there's been a study where if we do see more rainfall than usual over the Saharan desert during the hurricane season we're less likely to experience stronger than usual wind shear. So this is the comparison. So as you could see in the top map there um, the Saharan Desert experienced less precipitation than usual, which means that the upper level winds were a lot stronger coming from the west, which goes against the trade winds along the surface, which creates a much more hostile environment for many tropical cyclones to develop and to thrive as they continue to head further eastward, which definitely hinders tropical cyclone development when we see less rainfall um, precipitation over the Saharan Desert thanks to stronger wind shear. But if we were to take a look at the map um, just below it, we see the wind shear is lighter when there's more precipitation over the Saharan Desert, and that allows for more a more conducive environment for tropical cyclone development. So we're going to take a look at the climatology models to see how the precipitation anomalies will look like over the Saharan Desert because they could give a good indication of how much wind shear we're going to see and how and as a result how much tropical cyclones we're going to see. Unfortunately, if we were to take a look at the climatology models forecast, a NMME model, which combines all the most reliable models into the most um, in, um, to create the most accurate model, we do, or at least scenario, we do see there's much there's expected to be much more precipitation than usual during the month of August, and this uh, continues into September and even into October as well, which makes me believe that we're gonna see much less um, than usual wind shear over. Over the main development region which will create much a much more conducive environment for hurricanes and tropical cyclones to develop of course we need to take it with a grain of salt because for any forecast model even a model like this one which combines all the most accurate models 
it's definitely difficult for them to predict um, something that's months out, or at least a certain um, a general pattern that's months out. However, they uh, these computer models at least have a do have a decent amount of knowledge. So more likely than not, we should expect more precipitation than usual over the Saharan Desert, which definitely concerns me going into the hurricane season, as that will lead to much less wind shear than usual. And for those um, that could be spe um, skeptical regarding um, whether or not precipitation leads to less wind shear or not, we also could take a look at this other computer model, the CAN-SIPS model, when it comes to its anomaly in the when it comes to wind shear in the upper levels, right where the air pressure is around 200 millibars. And as you can see, it's also forecasting a much lighter than usual area of wind shear over the main development region and the Caribbean, which again reinforces the idea that there's going to be just a very um we're gonna see very favorable conditions when it comes to hurricane and tropical cyclone development unfortunately however the saving grace this hurricane season uh, um could be the fact that it, there is expected to be a stronger amount of wind shear over the southeast which could potentially help the tear storms from making landfall along the east coast if they were to take a track sort of like this because of course the wind shear would face uh, in a direction where the um, winds would come from the west which could potentially steer storms out to sea or at least significantly weaken them before they make landfall we need to see if that holds up but it might not even matter that much because where the most tropical cyclones develop is right over the main development region as well as the Caribbean. So even if it were to encounter a stronger amount of wind shear over the United States, it might already be too late because it had all this time to really intensify to the point where this um, this small area might not mean much or might not exist at all um, going into the hurricane season. That's certainly a possibility. So I still do believe that despite this small area, Area where the wind shear could be slightly stronger than usual i don't think it's going to be enough to outweigh the fact that this whole area is experiencing lighter than usual wind shear so this i am expecting a hyperactive hurricane season at this point in time thanks to those factors and with this light amount of wind shear of course many of these areas need to be concerned such as central america like saying into mexico and i know in the caribbean in many caribbean countries you're definitely worried every hurricane season especially when it comes to a uh, la nina pattern or um, when it comes to um, when when we're seeing li a light amount of wind shear like this, like in the DR, it's a movie when it comes to the amount of hurricanes that move right around the DR um, Haiti area during a La Nina hurricane season. So you definitely want to pay very close attention. And and during the main and in the main development region with wind shear this light, we're definitely gonna see. Um, we're going to see um, many hurricanes just pass through this area and we're going to see many tropical cyclones, hurricanes pull up to the Caribbean in, um, right in between the two seas of the Caribbean as well as Western Atlantic where it could go anywhere between these areas with wind shear this light. So make sure to stay prepared all throughout the Caribbean because remember all it takes is one storm for many of these areas to completely devastate an entire community. Another pattern that also has me concerned is that we're going to be in the negative North Atlantic oscillation phase um, for quite some time headed into the hurricane season, even into June. So if this were to continue, that would promote less wind shear than usual and more hurricane development. So this also has me concerned. Is it as this um, oscillation doesn't have as major of an impact as it does during the winter time because the jet stream during the summer is relegated far north but certainly enough to um that um to play a role when it comes to the amount of wind shear in the atlantic and if we see the north atlantic oscillation the a little bit more to i mean i meant to say a positive phase headed into the summer months and we're more likely to see a more tropical cyclone development with less wind shear during a positive north atlantic oscillation phase the good news is that during the hur early hurricane season it um we it is expected to be in a negative phase but we're gonna need to see if that continues on into the heart of the hurricane season so here's my overall forecast when it comes to the amount of wind shear you should expect this hurricane season and it's not looking good a light amount of wind shear over the atlantic extending 
into the Caribbean as well, where the wind shear could be even lighter thanks to the um, higher than usual amount of precipitation over the Saharan Desert, which typically promotes less wind shear than usual, more storm systems, shifting the upper level winds towards uh, easterly direction, which moves the same direction as the surface level winds. And by the way, the definition of wind shear is change or um, change in wind direction or speed with height. And when we see the wind direction move the same um, direction between the upper levels and the low levels in the atmosphere, that means that there's a light amount of wind shear. So it makes sense why a higher amount of precipitation will lead to less wind shear than usual, thanks to the fact that storms typically move from a easterly to westerly direction. And um, it creates enough of a and it creates a strong enough amount of wind shear in the upper levels um, for the winds to move at the same direction. So um, a very light wind shear over these areas, moderate amount of wind shear over the um, southeast um, should be expected. But I don't think it's going to mean much because of the fact that this area is just going to be just booming with tropical cyclone development this hurricane season. So make sure to take that into consideration at, over the next few months. But that's it for now, guys. And I think we got.